I purchased a Gosney Arc XL recently and the bake has been so consistent. The bottom heat of the oven and the actual Arc just cooks the crust to a caramelized perfection. There is no other oven, in my opinion, out right now that is going to give you these same results. Whether you are in need of a new oven for your pop-up or your dad's asking you what is the best oven to make some homemade pizzas, use our affiliate link down in the show notes, smash the link, it helps the podcast, and more importantly, it helps you. Ladies and gents, people of the internet, we're back here at Hot Tongue Pizza. It's me, your host, Alex Coons, and what am I doing here? I'm bringing you another episode of Pie to Pie, and this one is a special one because it's with Griffin Baker Pizza Maker, and I think that this is our first episode with an influencer. I don't know if Griffin would proclaim himself as an influencer, but he surely is. He's influenced my journey. Getting ready for this interview, I actually started making Gosney content myself because I wanted to say, hey, I'm on my path to becoming a Gosney god. And it proved to be much harder than I anticipated. Griffin makes beautiful content. He has this shot where his pies come out of the oven. It's sizzling, it's bubbling, it's beautiful. We talk about his journey from pharmaceutical marketing to working at two of the most popular pizzerias in Los Angeles, Ozzy's Abitz and Sean's from Secret Pizza LA. We talk about how Griffin started on a baking steel in his oven and if you go far enough back on his Instagram page, it's a beautiful journey because you can kind of see how bad his pizzas were and how we all kind of start at zero. And he's left those, those pies up as a reminder. He worked very hard on building the folly that he has. And we talk about how a lot of people don't really look at Instagram as a tool that you can use to build followers. You don't look at it as a job. And it's something that Griffin has done very well. He has built a following. He's built connections. He's doing collaborative posts. He's making money with his Instagram account that he hopes to continue to do and grow himself. He's had to slow down working at both Aussies and Secret, but Griffin is a young man. He's in his mid 20s. He has the world in front of him. He is getting so much knowledge working for two of these great pizzerias while already honing his skills on social media and these ovens at home. He's doing it right. He's doing it his way. And I'm really excited to see what the future holds for Griffin. Sometimes when we can get the insights and perspectives, especially from someone like Griffin who has so many angles within this industry it's a really important episode enjoy this episode go crank the band some of the most talented musicians and remember if you like green day you're not a bum who lives in your car griffin thanks for sitting down with me it was an awesome time thank you so much for the donuts you are a sweetheart love you dude enjoy this episode young griff aka Griffin Baker Pizza Maker. Pardon the interruption, but we need to take some time to mention our sponsor, Maestro Sausage. Maestro has been working closely with pizzerias for decades. They produce sausages designed specifically with pizzerias in mind. And you can tell, their Italian sausage crumbles look like they were handmade in your shop and they will taste that way as well. With over 80 years in business, family owned and operated, the family is incredible and so is their product. It's quality sausage with quality ingredients. If your sausage needs aren't hitting all the right notes, then let Maestro lead the way. Click the link in the show notes. A classical masterpiece awaits you. Back to the show. There were robberies in stores and I saw Lennon's dead body. They just keep it preserved like in a, in a little glass case in a room with four armed Russian guards on every corner. Your dad took you to that? Uh, well, he, he was working. Me and my mom were doing some tourist stuff. And, and our, you were like, let's go check out a dead body. Our Russian tour guide said, you got to see this. It's so sick. <laughs> that's, that's fucking, humans are weird. Yeah. That's weird as shit. Yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting trip. Sounds fun. 
Yeah. So that was that was Europe for you. Yep. Pierogies and uh, the Hard Rock Cafe. Nice. Dead bodies. Sounds kind of sick. Not as fun as a uh, Italy France. So I hear. I don't know. That sounds like a good trip to me. Yeah, we got to get you out to Moscow. Russia is a place that I have not been, but you know, would like to go. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about right now, but uh, maybe someday. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's a little rough everywhere, you know. Yeah. All right. How the hell did rough. you get into uh, cooking pizzas on your patio? That's a great question. Um, let's see. I I grew up in New York. Here we go. And uh, you, you might have heard this here before, we, but there, we there's go. a lot of pizza in New York. Here we go. I grew up in New York, so when I was fucking born, I just knew it. Yeah, you know, I, I wish came this out story, covered in tomato sauce. I wish this story just ended there. So I grew up in New York, and that's why. Yeah, I, 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 I hate to start the story out that way, because uh, I've, I've listened to the podcast before. but uh, You don't say. Yeah. Um, but I started making pizza on the balcony because I was fresh off the plane from New York. Um, and there weren't a lot of great selections in Orange yeah, we, County. Okay. I, okay. So you're living in the OC. Yeah. We, we landed in Santa Ana. We, we don't know why we just sort of picked a random town because it was not in LA right outside of LA. So the rent was a little bit cheaper, but we didn't realize that there, there'd kind of be nothing to do in Santa Ana. Why the hell did you move to Santa Ana? Uh, so it was the pandemic. Uh, I was working in pharmaceutical marketing right out of college. My girlfriend's an engineer. And what kind of engineer? A mechanical engineer. Oh, all right. Yeah, she uh, installs laboratory equipment for pharmaceutical companies. So you were both in the pharma game. Yeah, we're Big both. Pharma. We're both in pharma. She she's still in pharma. Um, but I was working remotely at the time. I'd moved to New York City because I was supposed to like work in their office out of college. And then the pandemic hits. Uh, you know, like my graduation was canceled and everything. We just had no graduation. Uh, Lame. Yeah. Wah, it, was, wah. it was pretty lame. And you know who's supposed to be our graduation speaker? Will Ferrell. Joe Biden. Oh, that would have sucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe Biden was a, was a... He was a fucking mumble some shit. I guess seeing him live <laughs> would be interesting. Yeah, and this uh, this would have been post or uh, pre-presidency. Oh, he, he had, wasn't the president yet? No, he, he's from Delaware, actually, and went to University of Delaware, which, okay. is, which is where we went to school. How so, long ago is this? This was 2016 to 2020. Man, 2020 was a wild year. It was fucking wild. So maybe you would have been a little bit more coherent at that time. And yeah. the speech would have been great. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah, okay. but, uh, yeah, we're living in New York City, pandemic hits. And, you know, I'm just working from home in my tiny ground floor New York City apartment. And uh, my girlfriend Ashton had the flexibility to kind of move wherever she wanted to because her company had openings all over the country. Yeah. So she asked if it was okay if we moved out to the West Coast. I didn't really have to ask because I was working remotely at the time. So I was just getting up, you know, 6 a.m. or starting work 6 a.m. West Coast time where it would have been 9 a.m. in New York. And you're like, yo, Santa Ana is the place. Let's yeah, move so, here. You know, it's fucking cold in New York. We're, uh, we're drudging through brown snow. I don't know if you've ever been there, but New York's pretty disgusting in the wintertime. It's pretty disgusting all the time. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we, we decided, you know. So is L.A., by the way. That was, yeah. that was not a diss. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, like it's pretty. Those streets are pretty gross. Just as disgusting, but warmer weather. Yes. Yeah. So you we, can smell the piss coming off the concrete. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's something that L.A. and New York have in common. Yeah. P. If P. we can if we can agree on something, <laughs> let's just agree on that musky piss smell in the alley. P. Violence. Homelessness. The, Some, uh, the stuff that brings cities together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't have a city without those three things. That's right. A good city. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we just wanted warm weather. I had the flexibility to work from wherever. She, you know, switched locations and started servicing pharmaceutical companies out here. And we were just kind of stuck in Santa Ana without any good pizza. There was a... And to be honest, we were kind of in a food desert. There wasn't like a Ralph's or a Vons or anything. Yeah, Santa Ana is like crazy. It's like like heavily populated. Like it's in the OC, in the OC, but there's kind of like nothing around. There's nothing there. It's bizarre. We uh, we didn't do a lot of research before we moved there, but yeah, you just said there's nothing there. California. It's a food desert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We uh, actually we were singing that whole song. We were singing that song the whole time we were moving. California. Phantom Planet. Yeah, I was actually doing California <laughs> from The Wizard. You ever oh, see damn. that show? No. Or that movie. <laughs> the guy comes out to like play Super Mario Brothers 3. Okay. Like in a Nintendo competition to California. 
And he's like, California. I think he, it was like, he was kind of on the spectrum. Okay. But it was actually a long commercial for Nintendo. Gotcha. Anyways, check it out. If you yeah, like video I gotta games. Check that out. And Fred Savage. Hell yeah. It's called The Wizard. The Wizard. All right, I'm going to check that out right after this. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. No, Phantom no. Planet. I'm, no, you're I'm good. juiced on my second you're good. coffee. You, you know what song I'm talking about, yeah, though, right? Yeah, okay. 100%. California. California. Oh, yeah. Here, here we come. Hustling in the driving down the Driving down the 101. 101. Oh, yeah. California. Some good harmonies right here. Yeah. I fuck with that song. <laughs> Sounds good? Mm hmm. Hell yeah. Um, so you're like, yo, it sucks out here. I'm gonna start baking on a bacon steel. Pretty much, yeah. You uh, you got that right. Shout out uh, Andres from Baking Steel. He's the absolute homie. But I I what bought did, the baking steel. What were you gonna say? What'd you do before the baking steel? Uh, I did nothing before. Okay, the baking all right. Steel. So here we go. You know go. what I did before Young the baking Griff. steel? California Pizza Kitchen take and bake. Shout out to California Pizza Kitchen. Yeah, let's not let's not hate on CPK. I love CPK. They, they have they have. They have been an innovator since the early 90s. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I, I That's grew a California up, institution. I grew up begging my parents to take me to California Pizza Kitchen. I'd have birthday parties there. Like, that was the absolute best. And where did you grow up again? Uh, Scarsdale, New York. That's a New Yorker. New York, going to CPK. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about not having good pizza out there. Just find a CPK, all right? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, actually, I was talking to the founder of CPK at last Whoa. year's Pizza City Fest. Okay. He was a... Big dog. He was one of the speakers on the panel with Mark Schechter. But uh, I was telling him afterwards, you know, I, I love your stuff, man. I grew up having birthday parties at your restaurant. Like, you're the fucking man. Did he shake your hand and say, I know. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, he's, a, he, he's old as fuck, but he, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, thank you, dude. Like, I appreciate that. Oh, that's so tight. I mean, a lot of CBKs have closed. They lost their contract at Dodgers. Really? I don't know if they lost it, but they're just not the official pizza of the Dodgers Damn. team anymore damn who is i think that that's a slot waiting okay. to be filled interesting so interesting we'll see yeah we'll see who takes over maybe papa john's <clears throat> <Hot tongue. laughs> i think uh i think tommy really wants it okay that, that, would, that would be a very fitting yes, partnership I think so. and i think it would be really next level to have them in there hell yeah dodgers if you're listening hit up tommy tommy the tommy b the Tommy B. The, team, the Tommy B. Biggest Dodgers fan in LA. That's 100%. I saw him take four pizzas in there to opening day, and he was a goddamn, he was like Santa Claus throwing slices <laughs> out, dude. It was unbelievable. He was, I'd never seen so many strangers smiling. It's probably the biggest service you can do in society, right? Yeah. Hand take, out free just pizza. Just hand out free pizza? Oh, yeah. Man. I want to take a moment to talk about our sponsor. Mailwise Solutions. Mailwise Solutions takes advertising to the next level. They design, print, and direct mail, menus, flyers, and postcards for pizzerias all across the United States. I've worked with Mailwise before. I tried to design my own menu and Kevin said, hey, give me a stab at this and holy shit. When he sent me back the menu, I was like, I thought I was okay at what I did and his design team blew me away. There's no mailing contracts, so you're free to advertise on your own schedule. Click the link in the show notes or request a sample pack at mailwisesolutions.com. Let's get you some new customers today. Yeah, CPK. CPK really brought me into the baking steel because I would go get the take and bakes mm -hmm. uh, and you would just throw them right on the oven rack. And I... I wanted to make my own pizza at home. Yeah. Um, so I found Baking Steel online. Um, actually, I, I found Baking Steel through an Instagram account called Apartment 3 Pizza. They, they're not super active anymore, but at the time, they were one of like the first like Instagram pizza people that I found. I was still in college before I'd ever made a pizza before. And, you know, I, I obviously... You know, Instagram shows you things before you even think about it. But I probably scrolled on a, a pizza video for too long and Instagram decides to start, start showing me all of these pizza videos. And the ones that would show me the most often were from Apartment 3 Pizza. And they were just this couple, I think in Brooklyn, I could be wrong, but neither of them professional pizza makers. They just had a baking steel and they would make the most beautiful looking pizzas just from their like Brooklyn apartment. And, you know, I, I, saw, I saw their pizzas 
like beautiful content, beautiful pizzas, just out of a baking steel. And I said, damn, I, I can really do this from home too. Like, let me, let me get one of those baking steels, try to learn how to make dough. And I was also very interested by like the video aspect of it too. I said, you know, these, these videos are so entertaining for me. Yeah. And you know, I, I could definitely do that. Like, yeah. I can take a video of the pizza coming out of the oven and post it on the internet. Um, so they, they were sort of my introduction to the baking steel. Okay. I buy the baking steel. And if you, if you scroll back on my Instagram, you oh, can see like, I have. okay, good. Um, you, you can see like how bad I was at making pizza. I had the baking steel like in the broiler drawer of my oven. It wouldn't get fully heated. And there's like these time-lapse videos of me, you know, pulling the broiler drawer open and launching a pizza. You know, I'm like standing up hunched over, like launching the pizza, like, you know, I'm basically standing up and it's like falling off the peel, getting all folded over itself. Um, but I was pretty bad at making pizza in the beginning. Um, and then I started doing some research. The, the first dough recipe I tried was Andres's dough recipe, the founder of Baking Steel. And he had a great, great recipe, uh, you know, two day, three day dough, super easy, just, you know, Audelisse, let the dough do the work itself. Um, and then the next, the next dough recipe I found was Mike Fitzik, who was one of the OG Gosney ambassadors. Um, at the time, he was running a pizzeria called Bakeria 1010, which I believe was in Hoboken. Mm -hmm. He's no longer there. He since opened a pizzeria called Bar 1010 in Philadelphia, which he's also now no longer affiliated with, and now works at a place called Express down in Ocean City, New Jersey. Um, but he posted, you know, he had like a Gosney collab video, which was his Neapolitan pizza recipe. And that was the first time, that was the first time I actually like read something that was teaching me about, like, here's why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. And here's why you should use double zero flour for Neapolitan pizza. And here's the difference between double zero flour and bread flour. Yeah. You know, here's the temperature you should be cooking at for, for double zero flour and Neapolitan pizza. Yeah. Um, and I got really interested in, you know, the, the differences and the nuances between types of pizza. Um, and that was sort of when I went down the rabbit hole of, you know, how can I make the pizza better? Uh, and I start the Instagram. At the time, it was sort of, you know, like I mentioned before, I saw Apartment 3 Pizza and I said, that's fun. I like watching this and I want to do it too. Yeah. But at the same time, my pizza kind of sucked. So I, you know, I started going down the rabbit hole of how do I make better pizza? Yes, but you, I mean, if you go back to those videos, you felt comfortable enough posting them. So it's like, you're, you're, you're putting that, those pizzas from the baking steel that look like underproofed, overcooked, and then you move to a smoker. Yeah. And then you move to an uni. Yep. So, and they uh, start looking better out of the uni, which is, I think, worth talking about, like, how important the right tools are to making good pizza. Because even if your recipe is fucking great, I mean, baking steels are great. I mean, I can, I can, I can do pretty fucking well with, like, an uni brick yeah. inside of a regular oven. You can get a fucking great, a, a oh, yeah. great cook and shit. But, I mean, like, the better the tools the better the pizza. Yeah, you're, you're definitely right. Um, so, so to what you first said, at the beginning of doing Instagram stuff, I was actually incredibly nervous. Uh, it took a long time to get over the fact that I was just kind of exposing myself to the world like that. Of course. It stressed me out a ton just thinking, you know, all, all these people are gonna see what I'm doing. Um, you know, are they gonna think it's weird that I'm so obsessed with pizza? Like, you know, it's it's... Did you start a brand new account or was this like your high school account? So it, it was a brand new account. Okay. But I, I sort of started, I just sort of started out by like following everyone I knew just to, you know, get a couple followers that people would be seeing my videos. Yeah. Um, what was your intention of like, uh, when you started that account? Like, so what the, you, was it like, I'm fucking coming for you. I'm going to be this content creator or I want this many followers. So that was actually never the intention at in the beginning. The, uh, the goal was sort of just to document the, the pizza making journey and sort of have a record of 
what I was learning and the improvements in my craft. And, you know, if people wanted to follow along and, you know, see what I'm doing to progress and how my pizza is progressing, you know, that's great. Like I'd, I'd love to have you come along for the journey. Um, so it started out as sort of just documenting, um, you know, let's, let's see how much better I can get than this. Yeah. Um, and then I realized what you said before, it's, it's all about having the right tools. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can make Neapolitan pizza and you can make a great dough with double zero flour, but you know, it's, it's kind of pointless if you're not cooking it in the right oven. Mm -hmm. Home ovens can't get hot enough. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this is sort of when uni was really on their rise. Yeah. They, they took off during the pandemic because everyone was stuck at home and people weren't going out to restaurants. Restaurants were closing left and right. And uni really pushed that on people. Like, you know, if, if the pizza you're making at home sucks, buy an uni you know it's well that coda was pretty dope yeah the coda 16 or whatever and 14 definitely. was like definitely a game changer in those kind of ovens absolutely i mean the uh the the coda 14 the coda 16 there or i guess it's uh the coda 12 oh uh, it's a 12 and a, yeah, 12 and a 16 a, a 12 and a 16 yeah but uh they're incredible machines you know they're uh they're definitely tailored for like the the home pizza chef mm -hmm. uh you know, I don't think they're made with the intent of, you know, supplying a business. Um, people use them for that. Yeah, they do. And uh, I've noticed, I've noticed when people are using the unis for, for business, they got to have kind of twice as many ovens as they're trying to make pizzas at a well, time. I mean, to be fair, I think that's most of those ovens. Like, unless you have yeah. like a Gosney dome where like the hearths, this, this, this stone so much thicker. Yeah. Like you're going to still need four or five rock boxes. That's, that's if you want to really fucking bang them out. Yeah. And, and then you can, you can, you can, you might be fucking next to a restaurant and your pizza is better coming out of a rock box than it is a fucking pizza master. If you know what you're doing. That's very true. That's very true. As yeah. long as you're letting that stone reheat yeah. for the right amount of time. Uh -huh. Yeah. You're definitely right about those rock boxes. Uh, incredible, incredible ovens right there. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was cooking on the baking. By the way, anyone who's just listening to this, uh, we haven't gotten into it, but, uh, uh, Griffin is wearing a Gosney hat and is, is, are you a Gosney ambassador? Uh, Gosney collective. Okay. You're in the collective. I mean, ever, anyone can get in the collective. Yeah. How, how do you get that ambassador title? That's a, that's a very good question. Maybe after this podcast, they can crown you ambassador. I, I hope so. Um, the, uh, I think they're, they're ambassadors. It's, it's kind of strange. And, uh, if you're listening, Gosney, not that strange, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> they, their, their collective is sort of more about like people who are in the business of pizza yeah. where the ambassador program is more like celebrity chefs uh, and lifestyle influencers. Yeah, they, like, they so like how many to, followers do you think you need? <laughs> you're getting yeah, up yeah. there. I, I think they like it when you have like 50 to 100,000 followers. Okay. I, don't, I don't know any of this if stuff. Everyone sure. listening, all of, our, all of our listeners out there, go and help Griff. <laughs> go give him a follow. Plus his content's pretty fire. If I, uh, if I blow up after this podcast, I'll be, I'll be very thankful. Yes. But I, I get the uni up. Yeah. So I realize I need, I need better equipment to make good pizza. And this was probably one month into having the baking steel. I've, you know, perfected my, my Neapolitan pizza recipe to the best that I could at that time. Yeah. And I go out to Ace Hardware and I buy an Unicota 16. Um, I bring it home. And the first pie I made, I was, I was in shock. Like just how much better yeah. that first pie I ever made in the uni was versus the best pie I could have made on the baking steel at the time. Yeah. Now, since then, you know, I've sort of figured out how to make the baking steel work a lot better. Of course. You know, heating it up properly yes. and, you know, having a dough recipe that's meant to be cooked for a longer time at yes. a lower temperature. Yes. Higher and hydration. Like, exactly. Heating that baking steel up for a motherfucking 45 minutes. And yeah. 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 You know, keep the, don't put your baking steel in the broiler drawer. Uh, th those kind of things. Yeah, I mean, I I saw you work the Gosney at my house, dude. Like you, you're. I mean, with those, you kind of do have to like. You can't just have the flame up and it, yeah. like a regular oven. You're yeah. you're you're kind of tinkering. You're you're spinning. You're touching it a lot more than you have to. Like a lot of people probably just think they can buy an uni or a Gosney, fucking throw it in, 
and they don't know like that you actually like once you got that puff you kind of have to start moving right away yeah you know to get Absolutely. a really great bake yeah in in any of those home ovens you if you're trying to do like a low and slow new york style kind of pizza yeah you pretty much gotta heat the oven up fully and then cut the flame yeah like yeah you know you, you wouldn't think that you have to cook your pizza in an off oven but you know they you do you do because they uh, they want those ovens to get up to that Neapolitan heat. Yeah. And uh, when you think about it, it's pretty amazing that how versatile those ovens are. Because you can true you can cook it a thousand degrees, or um, you know, like the Gosney Dome, they have an attachment called the door where you can cut the flame completely, throw the door on, and it, it'll maintain like a five hundred degree temperature for you know 30, 45 minutes, which is more than enough time to bake a couple of pies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, first first couple of pizzas I make in that in that code of sixteen are like groundbreaking at the time for for the pizza I'm making, um, and I start getting some traction. Yeah. You know, people people like seeing how I'm progressing, um, and you know, I get I start getting some engagement, some more followers. People are liking my videos. Uh, you know, the other the other Instagram accounts are reposting me and whatever. Um, but at a point, you know, I'm, I'm just making margarita pizza after margarita pizza and pepperoni pizza, and it's kind of repetitive. Uh, so that was when I sort of started to try to take things to the next level and get more creative with my pizza, uh, you know, make different kinds of dough and whatnot, start tinkering with the New York style dough. So then you got, you got, it just kind of takes off there. Yeah. I, I hate to say it takes off. Because there's a lot of, you know, social media work in the background. There is a lot of work. Because I think what's nice about your Instagram is if you go back, you can kind of see where you started. And like a lot of people only see, you know, Griffin Baker, Pizza Maker, 17,000 followers, all this like recipe tester, and 35,000 likes, yeah. that kind of shit. But I mean, you can see your progression, which is nice. I'm sure there's some fucking lames out there that just delete their early shit. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think that, you know, people don't think of uh, Instagram as work sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they don't see it as a tool for, especially I just had a long conversation with Bruce Irving about marketing. And like, it is a tool. I mean, people on TikTok are, they're making a living just posting content. I mean, are you, you do you get paid for, for content that you make? So I don't get paid by like Gosney or anything. I do a, you know, sort of like freelance collaborations with companies. Yeah. Uh, like I've done work for, for Grazza Olive Oil. Uh, I've done some work recently for a, a great pasta sauce company called Saws, S-A-U-Z. They just launched in like Whole Foods and Sprouts, that kind of thing. Yeah. Are you getting those gigs? Because I saw that you're, you're in a social media agency. So how did that happen? So I'm, I'm not in a social media agency. That's a... That's just what I chose is like the, you know, on Instagram, it really? asks you to choose like Dude, a I like business clicked type. it and I saw all these other fools and I was like, is this a fucking really? collective of, no. <laughs> of that like was... people in this social media agency? It showed me like a bunch of other pizza people. Yeah, no, I just chose that because at the it time I was, official, uh, dude. I was sort of starting to branch out with the social media work and yeah. you know, they make you choose like, you know, entrepreneur, pizza restaurant, business owner, like just some sort of title. Yeah. I chose social media agency because at the time I was really trying to monitor monetize on, you know, featuring different brands products in my videos. Yeah. So I, I created like a media kit Got with it. my stats and everything, my pricing and whatnot. And, um, you know, now when, when companies reach out to me, oh, you know, wow. in the beginning, it was kind of like, you know, here, we'll, we'll send you some product if you're willing to feature it in a video. And at the time I was like, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, exposure for me, exposure for you. I get free product. I get to, you know, do what I love doing, which is making pizza videos. Yeah. Um, but, you know, now that I'm making pizza professionally 50 hours a week, um, don't have as much time for the social media grind when those same kind of companies reach out trying to do just like a gift exchange for content. I say, you know, sorry, I, I don't have the availability, but here's my media kit with my prices. And, it, you know, it has different things like uh, price per story and, uh, you know, like a a video reviewing the product or more of like a natural user generated content recipe video featuring the product. Um, you know, it has different terms for exclusivity and usage rights of the video. And, you know, nine out of 10 times I'll, I'll send them my media kit when they ask, you know, for free work and, you know, who, 
who in this day and age is asking anyone to do free work. Um, I'll send them my media kit and they're, they're usually pretty responsive about it. They'll say, okay, awesome. You know, we'll, we'll take one video from you and one story and we want exclusivity for 30 days. Um, so these, I think these companies are starting to realize that if they want quality content and you know, they want these content creators to actually put a lot of effort into making good videos for them, it's, it's worth the money. Well, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of companies too are like, they're shifting from like commercials and shit and like most of their advertising budgets are going to like influencers or people with like heavy numbers. And it's like very niche too, yeah. you know, the pizza community. What, what, how, at, at what number of followers did you start kind of getting approached, do you think? Was there a, like a number or a time that like companies started being like, hey, let's do this exchange or they were interested in you making content for them? I would probably say maybe like 5,000 followers. Okay. And you know, that's, that's sort of like a rough estimate because you know, it might not have been exactly about how many followers I had at the time. Maybe that was just the time that my videos were taken off the most. Um, but s sometime around 5,000 followers is when they started reaching out to me versus what I was doing before of reaching out to companies and saying, hey, you know, I'd love to feature your product in my video. Yeah. If you just send me some of your product. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe maybe 5,000 okay. followers is when they started reaching out to me. And, and it's crazy how many people I'll get reaching out to me with products that have nothing to do with pizza. They will send an email like, we love your content and we want you to promote like, you know, this tequila or, you know, these these hats that we have. And I'm thinking, did you really actually look at my page? They probably didn't though, they right? Probably, they probably didn't look yeah. at the page So do you all. just delete those or do you send them the fucking no, skid? No, I don't, I, don't, I don't respond. No. Okay. I don't respond to those. So you do have, what were you doing in pharma again? Marketing it was pharmaceutical manager? marketing. Yeah. I was working so you at have an a, agency. So you have a marketing background. Yeah. I, uh, I majored in marketing in college. Because your, I, uh, your, your content is, is, I mean, like it was kind of booty at the beginning, <laughs> but I mean, like not for not that long. It's like your first. No offense it's taken. Like, it's like your first, no offense to what? No offense taken to the booty. No, I'm just kidding. Well, like in comparison to what you're doing yeah. now, but like you no, really, shit. it's like your first six videos, you're kind of just like figuring out. And then it does, there's like this major jump and the food starts looking better. The angles look better. You have this whole thing. And so did you always have that in you? Were you copying from somebody else? Because like as somebody, you know, I just started posting this kind of content myself. Uh -huh. And it's easy now for me to go and look at Chris, Minnesota, Chris, Field Zeets, to look at what you've done. There's so much Gosney content that I can be like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. But yeah. like back then, if we're talking about two, three years ago, you know, yeah, that's what a, was the inspiration? Did you always kind of have that, that mindset or was there like a click? Like, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. That's a, that's a great question. The, I think my signature sort of oven sizzle shot mm. was definitely inspired by apartment three pizza. Okay. That was sort of the content they were putting out where, you know, it was a baking steel pie that was coming out right from the broiler and they had that nice sizzly cheese and olive oil. Um, and then they'd also do like the, the slicing shots where you see the pizza sort of more, it's more like a bird's eye view where you see the pizza come into the box and then they slice it up and close the box. Yeah. So uh, those, those two like aspects of my content were definitely inspired by apartment three pizza just cause it was simple and easy. And uh, I think, I think in general, the public really responds to just simple content, you know, something that's not, not too flashy. Like you're just getting a look into these people's lives who happen to be, you know, hobbyist pizzaiolos and like making pizza at home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that drew a lot of inspiration into, into my pizza making. Cause I said, you know, these are just two people with full-time jobs that make pizza as a hobby. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, I don't need to be a professional pizza maker to make good pizza at home. But uh, back to the question you were actually asking. Um, yeah, that's, that's why I started out with the sizzle shots. Um, and then I wanted to sort of create more content out of each video. You know, I'd, I'd make a pizza and it was sort of one video and I wanted to stretch that out a bit. So I started recording the actual stretching and topping of the pies, launching. And I was also sort of realizing that, you know, in addition to people watching me learn how to make pizza, I also sort of wanted to teach people, you know, here's how I'm learning to make pizza. Yeah. You know, I, I started out uh, topping my pies on the peel, like on a metal peel, and they were getting stuck. 
So I figured out, you know, I need to use some semolina flour mm -hmm. instead of all-purpose flour. And that's the sort of thing that I could teach to my audience while I was learning it too. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you graduate to like uh, building your pie on the counter and scooping, scooping it up with the metal perforated peel. Mm -hmm. And then you, you know, now I'm doing it more uh, hot tongue style, New York style, building it on a wooden paddle. Yeah. Uh, transferring into the oven from a wooden paddle. Yeah. And these are all sort of just developments that you can see following my content over the past couple years. Yeah. So I, I thought it was, at least I thought it was valuable to, you know, not only just take videos of what I'm doing and, you know, people can notice what's changing, but to sort of call out, you know, here's what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And here's how it's helped me. Yeah. Uh, well, to go back to these people like being hobbyists and not wanting a professional pizza career. They're just yeah. like, this is what they're doing. You actually now work at two pizzerias. That is correct. It is no longer just a hobby. Yeah. You are working at Secret Pizza with the probably nicest person in the pizza game. I second that. Sean. Sean Lango. Sean just. <laughs> uh, and then you also work at Ozzy's. Yes, I do. For Ozzy himself. Ozzy himself, the, uh, the Cr CEO. Christopher Wallace. <laughs> Yeah, Chris. and uh, you split your time now. Yeah, I'm a. It's it's just about even. About did you work at? Hold on, do, did you work at Prime? No, you didn't. You never worked at Prime. No, never. For some reason, I thought I saw you in the back of that kitchen. No, I mean, uh, I've spent a lot of time at Prime. Okay. My uh, when I was in pharmaceutical marketing, so I, I started out in pharmaceutical marketing uh, for my old New York agency, mm -hmm. and then I got tired of waking up so early and quit and got a new job at a agency in Santa Monica. And that office was right near Santa Monica prime location. Got it. So I'd pretty much be there every day and finding out which East coasters from my office wanted to come with me to prime or who wanted me to bring prime back to the office. You got obsessed with prime. Yeah. I it mean, was uh, prime, time. prime was like the pizzeria that we would drive into LA for when we lived in Santa Ana. Okay. That was sort of our introduction to like good, you know, East coast style pizza yeah. in LA. Yeah. Shout out to, a. Uh, to Zach and Brett. Yeah, good guys. Great guys. Okay, so then back to uh, Chris and Sean. Yeah. So you split your time between two of those those two restaurants. How, yes, sir. How different are, are those two restaurants? They're very different. Um, Ozzy's is sort of a whole different beast now since that Dave Portnoy review. Yeah. Uh, when I started working there, the, the crew was still pretty small. Yeah. They had, you know, like two front of house people, uh, Chris and his partner, Craig, uh, and, you know, maybe like, I want to say three or four other people like yeah. making dough and making pizza and working the oven. And Chris hired me one day after the Portnoy review, he had been asking me for a couple weeks prior, you know, if you, if you want to come work at Ozzy's, like, you know, we've got a space for you. It'd be great for you to come by and, you know, learn how to make New Haven style pizza. And for the longest time, I, uh, I sort of thought my time was maxed out at secret. Yeah. I was working there about 30 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I just wasn't ready to be fully in the service industry yet. And then the, uh, the, the night that Dave Portnoy came to Ozzy's, my girlfriend and I were actually planning on going there for dinner. Um, good thing we didn't cause it would have been hectic at the time. Probably wouldn't have been able to talk to Chris or anything because yeah. it was in the middle of the, the Portnoy review. Yeah. Um, so the next day we go for lunch to sort of just congratulate him. Hadn't been to Ozzy's in a while. So I was craving some Ozzy's like we were the night before. And Chris said again, you know, like we're going to need help now that this, this review's dropped. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you want to, if you want to come work for me, like, let me know, like we, you've got a spot for you. Yeah. And at that time, my girlfriend sort of helped me come to the realization, like, you know, you should do it. Were you do? Were you on on top of working for Sean? Were you still doing any marketing or pharma pharma work? No. So I so I were, stopped doing pharmaceutical work in August of last year, twenty twenty three. Okay. I uh, my time there was done. Yeah. I uh, pizza was my passion. Okay. And uh, pharmaceutical stuff is is pretty pretty draining to the soul. How often do you? I bet how. It's a big pharma. It's pretty dark. Yeah. It, it was a great place to be like working out of college, you know, to be able to pay my rent and whatnot. But uh, it was pretty soul sucking. Yeah. You know, the uh, those big company executives are don't treat their employees very well. Um, 
And, you know, for months I was realizing that that pizza was my passion. Be a, I, so, I sort of never really had like a passion before. I feel like in college, everyone around me sort of like knew what they were going to do. Like, yeah. you know, this guy knew he was going to be a dentist and like go to dental school and some other, you know, I'm, I'm going to study psychology or something. Uh, you know, I want to work in finance. And I, I never really had like one thing that was like, this is what I want to do. Like, like, I this is what I'm going to put. Pfizer. Yeah. Like, I never, I never wanted to work for fucking Pfizer. Uh, my parents actually met each other working for Pfizer. Oh, wait, they're, they're in pharma too? Yeah, so that's, that's how I shit, ended up dude. in pharma. Parents, girlfriend, yeah. you. Uh, yeah, like both of my grandfathers were doctors. Fucking, I, I come from a family of science and doctors and medicine. And uh, yeah. both Easy. of my parents are sort of in like uh, marketing and pharmaceutical economics. Okay. So I, uh, I was studying marketing in school. I had had a, an internship at a pharmaceutical marketing agency, and that was sort of all I knew at the time. Yeah. All I knew was pharmaceutical marketing, and it was paying the bills, so I did it. Yeah. But I never had any passion about it, um, and this passion for pizza really, really started building up as I was making pizza at home and meeting other people in the L.A. pizza community, and it, uh, it, really, became, it really became apparent. Like it was, it was clear that... I was supposed to be making pizza and not, yeah. you know, wasting my life in a nine to five pharmaceutical job. Well, how often when you're working with Sean or with Chris, do you think, man, these guys don't even know what they're doing? <laughs> Ooh, we want the vegan meats. We want the vegan cheeses. Are people coming up to you and asking you, do you have vegan options? Do you have vegan meats? Well, guess what? A lot of them are not that good. But there is one that reigns superior, and that is Beehive. Everything that they make at Beehive is levels ahead of what you can get in a grocery store. Their pepperoni, their crumbled sausage, their cheeses, there is no contest. And the owner is one of the coolest people I have ever met. They make incredible products that go on your pizza, and it is dope plant food. That's what they call it, and that's what it is. Beehive, the best look no further it's beehive baby straight out of nashville good people great product check them out not a not never you know uh, do you ever like offer like a i mean like because you're making pizza every day now yeah you know and, and you I, know I mean, you got your own spin on things or are you just like soaking up everything yeah i mean uh i'd, I'd hope there's some uh some contributions that i've given to secret and ozzy's i've a uh, I've definitely like tweaked the, the Aussie's dough program a little bit to mm -hmm. make things easier for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, I'll tell you about that later. If you're listening, did you, did, <laughs> did you take, I mean, it's kind of hard not to do this, but like you went and worked for Sean and then you go and work for Chris. Don't you take a little bit of what you were already doing than what you're doing with Sean and then be like, Hey, Chris, you should do it that way. And then Chris says, Hey, it's kind of like being Absolutely. in a love triangle. Yeah. And then it's like, Hey, I saw them do this over there. And then you tell Sean, yeah. it, you know, no, that, that definitely Does happens. that get weird or what? Um, you know, I think it everyone's would be, friends too. Yeah. So I was going to say, I think it would be more weird if the three of us weren't already like good friends before, you know, colleagues, um, you know, if, if this were just my boss and yeah. not someone that I was close with, you know, it would probably be kind of weird if I was spilling these kind of things across each other. Yeah. But uh, Sean and Chris are great friends. Like Sean was the one that referred Chris to Serenzia, the food provider. Um, and, you know, like Sean's always at Ozzy's and Chris always comes to Secret and we're all we're all just great buddies. So, yeah. um, you know, when I when I give Chris a tip about something we're doing at Secret that might work well, he's very receptive to it. Yeah. Um, you know, like the the scales that you just recommended to Sean. Yeah. I recommended that to Chris. I sent him the link on Amazon, and when I got in the next morning, it was sitting on the counter. Yeah. Um, They're incredible. Yeah. That, that 50 pound postal scale. Yeah. Game changing. Yeah, because you to get a, to buy like a regular food kitchen 50 pound scale, it's like 230 bucks. Yeah. 240 bucks. Sean was telling me that. Um, well, you guys are welcome, and no one works for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, Yet. shout out, shout out, Yet. Awesome. Griffin. Yeah. You want a job? Oh, maybe <laughs> just work at three pizzerias. Yeah, after uh, after what? this podcast, let's see, let's see what you're offering. Oh my god! I mean, you do have, you definitely have some bargaining chips. Uh, 
Well, this I was gonna wait to ask this question, but I mean, we're already here. Like, yeah. what is like, what 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 do you want this journey to look like? I mean, you're working for like two very busy pizzerias. Maybe you know, Chris is so hot right now because of the Portnoy thing. Sean has been hot since he fucking probably took out his first pizza of his oven. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, he's getting infatuation write ups like on probably the first pop up he ever had. Uh, you know, that's working at two very busy pizzerias like that. Like you you got to be retaining a lot of this great knowledge and whatnot. But like, where do you see yourself? What is your goal? You know, that's funny because I kind of have no idea. I, uh, I started making pizza at both of these places because they were two of my favorite pizzerias in LA after Hot Tongue. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I say that with all, all sincerity. You're when people ask me what my favorite pizza in LA is, I tell them hot tongue. Wow. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. No, you're, you're doing some great stuff over here. All those, all those specialty slices too. Like you're a, you're Rita. I like that you're calling it a Rita, not a Marg like everyone else. But yeah. uh, I tried that slice last week. I was like, damn, how have I never tried this before? I told Sean about it. You ever tried the Rita? He's like, I think I've tried the vegan version, but I've never tried like the, the new dairy version. Yeah. Sean came in like two days later. Tried it and was like, Griffin, you were right. That's like a, it's like one of the best slices in LA. Um, Shout out from the rooftops. <laughs> sorry, I, I got lost in all the hot tongue praise. What, Thank you. What I are know. we talking about? I mean, we can keep going with that. But, yeah, uh, Alex Coons is the <laughs> fucking best pizza maker in all of LA. Oh my God. I'm blushing, <laughs> but he's right. Uh, yeah. The Your journey, where you want to go, you have yeah. no idea. So uh, whenever Chris introduces me to someone, he says, you know, this is, this is Griffin Baker, pizza maker. He uh, works at Secret and he makes pizza on Instagram. And uh, in five years from now, he's going to have a better pizzeria than all of us. And I always look at Chris and I'm like, who decided I'm going to have a pizzeria? Um, nice. But it, it, sort of, it sort of seems like that's the path that things are going down. Yeah. Um, Do you want that? I'm, I'm still like not sure. You know, I, I listen to this podcast enough to know that... Uh, you're, you're getting yourself into some serious shit when, yeah. you, when you decide to actually go brick and mortar. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's cool to see like a successful scenario where you put in that work for a couple years and then you're able to take that step back and not be in here all the time and yeah. have that, that position of leadership where you're not making all the pizzas anymore. You're just, you know, dealing with payroll and the, and the food order and, you know, your, your staffing and whatnot. Um, yeah, all that sounds super fun. <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff you like to do, like make pizza, and you're just like sitting in an office, being like, "Oh man, yeah. payroll! I don't know if we're gonna make that this week." Yeah. I say that with uh, with all the naivety of never actually uh, having a brick and mortar. No, but I mean, you nailed it. So yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I think you you said it best on this podcast that it's the difference between being a business owner and having a job. Yeah. Um, so you know, I would love to continue in the service industry, in the food world, cooking pizza. Um, and for a long time, I was trying to pursue that in the form of social media content creation. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if I could get to a point where my following took off enough that I could pay my bills creating content, yeah. creating pizza content instead of actually serving pizza to people, I think that would be really cool. Yeah. Because a uh, I wouldn't be covered in flour all the time and sweating near the oven. And is that something you would feel like you would kind of need to like take a step back from these two pizzerias though, and concentrate more on pushing that? Because like we talked about, I think like even I've made like eight videos. Okay. Yeah. But I, I, it like, it takes a lot of time. You know what I mean? Definitely. You, you have to, you have to chisel it out of your day. You got to make all the pizzas. You got to get all the angles. You got to move the camera around and then you got to edit it all. And then, and, and it's not just, you can't just have nine videos. You yeah. have to have them locked and loaded. Oh, and yeah. like when I talked to Schechter, what he said, I was like, yeah, Griffin's got the formula. And he was like, no, Griffin doesn't have a formula. Griffin constantly uh, posts and like has figured it out. And it's not, it's not so much about like, you know, having the greatest shot of the pizza coming out, but it's the consistency. But if you're not, if you don't have time for that, you know? Yeah, he's a... He's absolutely right. It's a, uh, it's all about training the algorithm, uh, staying consistent and, you know, providing something that your followers can like come to expect of you. Yeah. Um, and, and Schechter really put it best and he sort of like described things that I didn't even realize I was doing, like posting at the same time every day. Yeah. Um, 
you know, posting with a similar format and sort of having like a brand identity to the content that I'm posting, you know, yeah. similar music, you know, yeah. you sort of, you got to figure out what is your, you yeah. know, Instagram, social media personality when it comes to posting those pizza videos and stick to it. Um, and I think someone, you know, Schechter also mentioned it on his podcast, but Pizza Fart is doing it incredibly well. Yeah. He, uh, I mean, it's crazy to see what that guy has built. Yeah. Like he's, he's fucking taken off. Oh yeah. But that's, cons but that's a dude who's like consistently super pushing consistent. the same content since getting both those jobs, you've taken a step back, haven't you? From yeah. the, the amount of shit you've posted. Absolutely. So I, uh, you know, I started doing this when I was working a mostly remote nine to five. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I could take, I could take my lunch break for an hour during the middle of the day, make a pizza and like edit most of that content. What are you editing on? Uh, cap cut. Okay. Um, yeah, just a free. I think I'm the only person that's like editing in Instagram. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just cap like cut. It's free. I like cap cut. Cause you know, if Instagram goes South and deletes your drafts yes. or something oh like that. Oh my God. And you want to just punch yourself in yeah. the nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cap cut also has a lot of cool free tools. Like it'll, It'll take all the audio in your video and automatically like give you captions for it. Oh, okay. They got like a bunch of different templates for the the fonts of the captions and everything, royalty free music and whatnot that you can add in, and you export it from there. So you you've got your video saved in your camera roll instead of you know leaving leaving it up to Zuckerberg. <sighs> Leave nothing up to the Zuck. Leave nothing to Zuck, except maybe beating Elon's ass. Exactly. Just joking. <laughs> the the content's a crazy thing. Do you do you would you ever like think about doing marketing for restaurants? I would love to do that. When I, uh, when I started, you know, reaching out to companies and trying to monetize the social media content stuff, my plan really was to like reach out to restaurants with my media kit and say, you know, let me manage all your social media for whatever price a month. Um, and I, Cause that's a big thing. Yeah. And I, I sort of just never got the ball rolling on that. Um, I was making I was making pizza at the time and really enjoying it when I left my pharmaceutical nine to five. And, you know, the plan at the time was to look for another job. Like I, I was just sick of pharmaceuticals. I wanted to stay in marketing. I was a, a project manager at the time. So I was looking for other, you know, project management positions. Um, like with with just companies in LA. I actually I interviewed with Uni at their like for their office in Austin, Texas for a position on their marketing team. Yeah. Got to the third round before I was rejected. Damn. Um, I was interviewing with Liquid IV here in LA. They're in El Segundo. Yeah. Third round rejection. Um, and, you know, I was, I was spending, you know, two to three hours a day applying for jobs, going on interviews and whatnot. And, and then I started talking to Sean. And Sean actually when I first started doing my first couple pop-ups, like from my balcony mm -hmm. where, you know, a handful of strangers would come pick up pizza, like really no one, like, you know, six to eight people would, would respond to my shit and buy a pizza and come pick it up. Yeah. Um, Sean so graciously gave me like two hours of his time. He was just doing prep in the, in the shop one morning and just told me everything I wanted to know. Yeah. LLC, business insurance, telling me about his dough, telling me about the whole restaurant operation and just, just giving me advice on like how to pop up from home. Sweet man. Yeah. And he, you know, he, he was making what I thought was some of the best pizza in LA at the time. Easy. And I called him up and I said, you know, if you're, if you're ever looking to expand things and looking to hire someone else or just need a little bit of help around the shop, you know, I, I would love to do whatever I can to contribute to, you know, this, this wonderful product that you're putting out there. Yeah. And he said, I, th I think this was in July that I called him and he was like, you know, I'm, I'm going out of town right now. Um, you know, we don't need help quite yet, but come August, you know, I, I was actually thinking about bringing another person on. So in August, come in, see if you like it and we'll take it from there. So I came in, I think on a Tuesday morning, you know, showed me how to do the dough process and everything. Um, Anna, who works there, who has a background from Roberta's, both in, uh, in New York and LA, she taught me on Wednesday that next day how to do, you know, the cheese prep and sauce prep and veggies and everything. And sort of, sort of never looked back from there. Yeah. I was doing Tuesday, Wednesday prep, uh, you know, helping out on Thursday, Friday service. And you know, it's, it started out sort of just come in and see if you like it. 
And I, I just never left. Yeah. And then uh, Aussies came around and- Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, it sounds like it's kind of like naturally kind of happened. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, had sort of had less time to spend on the social media work. Um, well, I guess it's like really figuring out what you want to do. Yeah. Because you obviously have a marketing background. You've done the Instagram content thing. I mean, like you're in a nice, sustainable place to like, if you want to pick that back up and yeah. like really go full force, you already got the media kit. You got two jobs at some of the best pizzerias in Los Angeles. Like there's a lot of directions for you to go here. Yeah. And you know, I haven't totally lost touch with the, the content creation. Like, by the way, how old are you? I'm 25. Yeah, you're fucking very young. So <laughs> yeah. you like you're you're in a pretty sick spot. I mean, you could you could you could continue working at different restaurants for the next three years and you'd still you know, be that, fine. That's one of the things I'm most grateful for is that I I found this passion of mine so early. Yeah. Um I've never met someone in this industry that's as young as me. Yeah. Um to the point that when I find someone who's like still in their twenties, I get excited about it because yeah. all of my friends in LA are like 35 to 40, which. <laughs> <laughs> I know we all which, forget how young Griff is, dude. <laughs> young Griff. Oh, Chris, Chris never lets me forget how young I am. Well, um, he just probably remembers how old he is all the time. Yeah. You're just a constant reminder. Yeah. You know, I'm working with some geezers, but it's, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Fucking geezers, dude. <laughs> no, I, I love it though. Cause I'm a, I'm a firm believer in like surrounding yourself with people who are in a position that you want to see yourself in. Yeah. You know, so if I was hanging out with a bunch of 25 year old people making pizza in LA, I probably wouldn't be learning much about improving my craft or starting a brick and mortar or anything like that. But I'm hanging out with people like you and Sean and Chris yeah. and you Matt probably, Lyons from Tribune yeah. and Mark Schechter. And the, the amount of information that I'm absorbing is like absolutely incredible. Uh, so I, I feel very grateful, especially to people like Sean and Chris, who sort of just gave me a shot in the dark. Yeah. You know, Sean started out making pizza at home like I did. Um, I'd never worked in a kitchen before, but he still said, come on by and help me out. Yeah. You know, I, he probably saw a little bit of himself in me with him not having any yeah. actual kitchen experience. And he was like, let's give this kid a shot. Yeah. Same with Chris. You know, he knew that I was, you know, capable enough to make Sean's pizza. Um, but he sort of just gave me a job and, and put that trust in me without ever actually like watching me make a pizza. Yeah. Uh, so that, uh, that's been one of the greatest honors of my life is for these, these incredible pizza makers to trust me making their product that's going out to the public. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you, how do you feel, uh, the content creator or influencer, uh, has changed the pizza industry? That's a great question. Um, oh, I think a lot of people are doing a lot of different things. Um, you know, like let's say, let's say David Turkel, Law Caesars on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's he's done an incredible thing by uniting the the LA pizza community. You know, he's very into learning about the people behind the pizza mm -hmm. and why they're doing what they're doing and sort of just uplifting everyone in the pizza community. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, he, he's helping, he's help, helping people find catering gigs. I saw on his Instagram story last night, who wants to do a 50 person wedding, you know, next yeah. month or whatever. Um, and he, he creates content that's really engaging and brings a lot of people together. Mm -hmm. And then there's, you know, the, the other kind of influencer who charges a thousand dollars for them to come into your restaurant and take a cheese pole video. Yeah. You know, I, I hate that shit. Cheese pole video. I don't care how stretchy your cheese is. I want to know how good your pizza tastes. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it really depends on the, the type of influencer and what they're, what they're doing with their content. What is the proudest thing in your pizza career thus far? Honestly, probably, probably just how far I've gone with like the help of the Gosney collective. Yeah. Um, I've done some really cool shit thanks to the really cool people at Gosney. Yeah. Uh, um, and I'll, I'll take this time to sort of explain how I got into the Gosney stuff too. Um, but you know, I was making all these uni videos and to be, to be brutally honest, the, uh, the uni people were kind of leading me on about ambassadorship. Uh, so I'm making all this free content for them. Uh, 
you know, interacting with all their ambassadors and everything. And I, I'd had like phone calls with them talking about the ambassador program and, you know, just how I can get in there. And they always kind of hit me with something like, you know, we're, we're not currently accepting any new ambassadors, but like, you know, we'll, we'll let you know when we are. And like, you know, you'd probably be a great fit. So like, let's stay in touch. Um, and that gave me a lot of hope because when I was, when I first bought this uni oven and saw these videos that the other uni ambassadors were posting, uh, Ben Mushy Peas or uh, Chris Doball Disco, some, some great pizza makers making beautiful pizzas. Shout out to both of them. Doball I Disco. saw Doball Disco. Rich Payne, <laughs> do and behold, my favorite guy. Huh? But they're kind of dicking you around. Yeah, they were, they were kind of fucking with me for a bit. And, uh, you know, I was making some videos that were getting millions of views with their oven. And they, uh, they, they never really gave me a shot. And maybe three weeks later, I get, a, I get an Instagram message in my requests from JK, Jonathan Cantor, the uh, chief marketing officer of Gosney. And he says, Damn, they're just poaching fools, dude. <laughs> wow. What year was this? 2022? This, uh, I want to say this was 2022. Okay. Maybe early 2023. Okay. Um, but he sends me a message like, you've got great content and let's get that uni out of your video. <laughs> Ooh, gangster. <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, and that, that was like the most exciting message I ever got. He, uh, Man, I'm excited. Just he calls me up on the phone and he's like, you know, we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of great people on the Gosney team, Chris Bianco and whoever. And he's like, we want to, we want to plug you in with these people. We want you to represent Gosney, like, you know, throw the uni oven in the trash and we'll send you a rock box. And, you know, we're, we're starting this Gosney collective of home pizza makers and, you know, small, small pizza pop-ups and businesses. And, you know, we, we want you to be in like this first round of Gosney collective. And I said, Absolutely, fucking yeah. like I am. I'm fucking ready. Let's yeah, fucking do this. Everybody wants to be a part of something. Yeah, I, uh, I, I hung up from that phone call and I was like jumping around my apartment. My girlfriend was like, "What the fuck is going on?" So I was, I was just so excited to, to have gotten an offer from someone and to, you know, sort of have that recognition. Because that's that's not what the goal was when I started making pizza content. But when I started doing the more creative videos. Uh, you know, viral recipe nonsense, whatever. Um, the, the uni ambassadorship like really became like a goal of mine. Like I, I was working towards that and I said, I, I want to be one of those people who yeah. makes that flashy content and, you know, people, people like seeing their pizzas. Yeah. Uh, so having that recognition from Gosney, I was, I was, a, I was, I was ecstatic to, yeah. to have that recognition and for them to like want me to be on their team. Um, and the Gosney Collective is how I met like Mark Schechter, Matt Lyons. Uh, and Matt Lyons gave me my first professional cooking experience without like ever having met me. Yeah, Pizza City Fest. Yep. Well, I think like you did, a, you can't say that like you didn't really have, like I could look at your Instagram and be like, I'll, you fuck, you're hired. That's fair. You know That's what I mean? Fair. Like I mean, you, you're, it's not like you had experience. I had I mean, some you, experience. I mean, if you, if you can make a pizza look that good coming out of a rock box, which is not an easy tool to use. Well, you humble me. Thanks. Yes. Um, yeah, but you know, I'd never stretched like an 18 inch pie before or yeah, anything like different. that. Uh, never worked in a kitchen. Like just watch, uh, you just watch a couple of episodes of the bear. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everything. Exactly. Yeah. Watch some Gosney videos, watch the bear mm -hmm. behind watch, uh, corner. Watch Chris Bianco. Exactly. Heard hot, hot. hot. Um, Let's let Chris Bianco talk about alchemy. <laughs> I uh, I fucking love Chris Bianco. I still I still owe him a visit. He uh, are you guys homies? Not really. I mean, we've talked a little bit, and I asked him. I asked him on Instagram once, like, "Hey, I really want to come in and try your pizza, but you know, it's impossible to get a reservation right now." Mm -hmm. And he. And I guess I, I heard on another episode that he does this to everyone, but he was like, oh yeah, here's my phone number. Text me when you want to come. He does. It's a psychopath. Yeah. Just like <laughs> gives out his number to everyone. I'm yeah. like, oh. <laughs> talk to Chris one time. He's like, oh, so I'm just texting Chris Bianco. It's like, okay. Yeah. It's a, it's honestly crazy that no so one's just like, leaves say, his phone did number. You, did you go and taste, taste his pizza? No, I, I never did. Cause, cause shit just got busy and he, yeah. uh, I think he wasn't spending as much time in LA anymore. By the time I was trying to go, he yeah. was sort of floating back in Phoenix for a bit. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, we, we were talking a bit and, uh, you know, how, how cool is that to just like get Chris Bianco's number? Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I told him like, I'm one of the Gosney dudes when I asked him for that. So I, I, I give, I give that credit to Gosney for, uh, for getting me Chris Bianco's number, but that's not important. Um, but the Gosney stuff, I, I, I'd say that's what I'm the most proud of. Like they've, they've hooked me up with some really cool gigs. Um, I did a catering event for Ellen Bennett of Headley and Bennett Aprons. Yeah. The, uh, the apron with the little ampersand logo, yeah, yeah, yeah. trendy social media, whatever. Um, so we got to go cater her, her son's birthday party at her house. Uh, you know, celebrity chefs and whatnot there. Uh, she gave us a bunch of aprons and stuff. And, you know, to think, to think that two years ago, I was like making those baking steel pizzas and working in pharmaceuticals and whatnot to now like working in secret and working in Aussies and doing a catering event for, for Ellen Bennett. Um, you know, it's, it's just some really cool shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, hard work can take you a lot of places. Yeah. You know, uh, and I, I think you're a testament of that. I mean, like you have rolled with the punches and you even, I think it's brilliant saying that you don't know what you want to do. Uh, there's too many people out there that just decide that they're supposed to do something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, you're figuring it out. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know exactly where the future takes me, but it's definitely somewhere pizza related. Yeah. Well, let's wrap it up there. Uh, I got one final question. All I right. Think you all know, right. I think, you know, it's coming. Yeah. I've, uh, I've watched the podcast. Uh, who's the greatest artist all right. or band Yeah. So, of, uh, of all time to you? I like the way you phrase that because my number one is a band called the band. Mm. Are you familiar? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. There's a great, the band documentary. Yeah. The, the new one, the, uh, once we're brothers. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's a great one. Rest in peace to, a. The recently deceased Robbie Robertson. Yes. But uh, yeah, I, I always got to go with the band. Damn, you know? I thought you were going to say Green Day. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to Green Day eventually. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the band, all multi-instrumentalists, uh, four out of the five Canadians. Yes. I know love you that. I love mean, that's Canada. number one. Um, oh, Canada. Yes. Um, maple leaves, all that stuff. Syrup. I had some this morning. Yeah, hell yeah. Are you kidding me? Drink it for breakfast. That's, that's what we do. Yeah, I'm but- I uh, have a maple bar. <laughs> there better be one in there from that box of donuts, dude. By the way, I got to say this before we keep talking about the band, but you and Cody are the first people, two people that don't own restaurants that we've had on here have brought gifts. So hell restaurant yeah. owners, bring the coffee, bring the donuts. <laughs> You guys learn something up. from the content creators. Yeah. This dude was gracious enough to have you on the best pizza podcast <laughs> on Spotify. You don't even bring the man some yeah. donuts. Come on, some coffee, some crack, or like some cocaine, oh. drugs, whatever. In all honesty, in all and honesty. And you wore the yeah. Costco wholesale fucking sweatshirt. I was planning on getting you one of these. That would have been magical, dude. I, uh, I was telling Sean for months that this was going to be my podcast gift for you. And then maybe like three weeks ago, I get on the website to order one and it was sold out. So, That's because uh, Costco, seeing, like that Costco wholesale gear is hard. Yeah, it is fucking hard. Uh, I want to start a, like an, a Los Angeles pizza team just called LA Signature. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? That would be a pretty sick concept. Yeah, with, with, with that font. Anyways, oh, back yeah. to the band. The band. <laughs> you know, they're the, they're your, your favorite rock band's favorite rock band. That's they, true. They sort of inspired like all of the music throughout like the rest of the 70s and 80s. Like they, uh. They really change shit. Uh, three of the five incredible singers, like they, uh, they sort of just changed like the the face of music. Yeah. Uh, Did you listen to them growing up? I didn't listen to them too much growing up. It was a the band is also my dad's favorite band. Very cool. So I, I grew up listening to you know the Wait and Up on Cripple Creek and uh, the night they drove old Dixie down. But I'd yeah. never actually like taken an extensive look through their discography. Yeah. So that was probably in college when, you know, I, I liked these three songs a lot and I decided to go explore, you know, the rest of what was going on with the band, you know, watch some, some documentaries. And, uh, I was just very fascinated by them. Yeah. Know, they had a lot of different sounds. Yeah. A lot of different things going on. Yeah. Toured with Bob Dylan in their early days, the basement tapes. There's just a, uh, they got some cool stuff in their history. 
Levon Helm, the uh, probably the most talented musician to ever walk the earth, in my opinions, drummer, front man, singer. I think he was uh, one of the first drummers to be like, you know, the actual kind of lead singer of yeah, the band. Yeah, move over, Phil Collins. <laughs> what? Genesis. Yeah, the disrespect to Phil Collins. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, I'd probably have to go with the band. Right. And then some honorable mentions to uh, Bob Dylan, Neil Young, Willie Nelson, definitely Willie Nelson. And uh, maybe Paul Simon, too. Paul Simon. I Hell fuck yeah. With, I fuck with Paul Simon hard. Definitely. Uh, Not so much Garfunkel. No, I fuck with, with, with both of them. I, lo I love them both. Garfunkel is a weirdo, man. <laughs> I like that guy. Yeah. Uh, but no Green Day. Oh. I thought you, I want, love I thought you wanted to put. I thought you so wanted I, uh, to put fucking our boy on blast. From, I got uh, I got to politely <laughs> call out my friend uh, Chef Daniel Holzman of Danny Boy's Pizza. Uh, I love Green Day. I love Green Day, and I don't live in my car. I live in an, in a car sized apartment, but I, I still love Green Day, and I'm I'm not I'm not taking the Green Day slander, Danny Boy, but I still love. All right, dude. I think that that needed to be said. <laughs> Definitely. You know, no, that's, thank been you. On, that's been on a lot of people's minds. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Green Day has always been cool and will always be cool. Yeah. Dookie is a phenomenal album. Absolutely. Where do we go to get in touch, to look at those beautiful pizzas, to copy everything you've done to become a Gosney God themselves? Not self-proclaimed Gosney God. Alex Coons proclaimed Gosney God, but still I love it. Uh, you can find me... Griffin Baker Pizza Maker on Instagram for my videos. Uh, Griffin Baker Pizza Maker at gmail.com for, you know, catering requests, uh, social media content, social media consulting. Uh, I do Gosney, Gosney lessons. If you've got a pizza oven at home, you're not sure how to use, hit me up. I'll come teach you how to use it. But uh, yeah, Griffin Baker Pizza Maker on all platforms is where you can find me. Young Griff, thank you for doing this. Thanks for having me. It was a, it was a whole lot of fun. Yes. And an honor. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you so much. Oh.